For those not aware, a few weeks ago, I created a video where I spoke about this very strange, very mysterious Steve Jackson card game where it seems like it continues to predict future events. This card game has really gained in popularity the last few weeks ever since Trump's rally on July 13th when people notice that there is a card titled Enough is Enough which shows a man which does look eerily similar to Trump being taken out by a bullet. Now if I were to make a video exploring every card in this game that video would probably be a couple hours. So like I said, what I did was I took five cards that really stood out to me and I explored them further. And the card that stood out to me the most was this card right here, Political Correctness. What makes this card so odd is that you have to remember this card game was created in the 80s and published in the 90s. Many others, including myself, do not remember insensitive pronouns, misgendering being a thing in the 80s, the 90s, or even the early 2000s. That seems to be something very recent, the 2010s on up. This card is extremely accurate to the world we live today. We also have to remember that Steve Jackson, the creator of this game, his office was raided by the Secret Service. He was raided due to suspicions of hacking. So who knows what he was able to get and what he was able to learn through this hacking that allowed him to foretell many of these events through his card games. But with that being said, we are going to go ahead and look at some more strange and eerie cards in this game that could perhaps be even more stranger than the last set of cards. So with that being said, let's go ahead and begin. Before we do begin, I do want to say that this order is in no particular order. This is not a top 5 or a top 10. I will be looking at these cards as they come. The very first card on the list, and I have to say this card gave me the creeps, so much so that I had to make sure it was real and come to find out it is a real card. It's being sold on eBay. This card titled Imposter. Now for a lot of you, I don't even have to say anything. All you have to do is take a look at the artwork on the card to know what this card is trying to tell us. For those that know, no. For those that don't know, for years there has been a long-standing theory believed by many people that the Joe Biden we see now is an imposter and that the real Joe Biden has been deceased for years now. People have pointed out that every time he's seen on camera, he always looks different, that his features always change. His weight and his height always seem to change as well from one day to the next. And again, this is not a theory believed by a small group of people. Now what's even crazier about this card, if you take a look at the man in the artwork, his eyes are different. On the left, he has blue eyes, but on the top right, he has brown eyes. What is actually mind blowing is that the fact checkers fact checked this theory back in 2021. Look at this post from Reuters. Post making the claim that United States President Joe Biden has been replaced by another person because his eye color has changed with age are false. That is absolutely crazy. Continuing to read from this Reuters article, it says the claims that Biden has been taken out or replaced appear to be linked with a certain theory group. This article uses two photos that people are saying is proof that the current Joe Biden is an imposter. One photo shows Joe Biden with darker eyes and the other photo shows Joe Biden with blue eyes. So one would think that this card was created as a satire to this theory. But no, this card was created a couple decades before this theory was even a thought in people's minds. Even the man in the artwork does look a little similar to Joe Biden. It might not be spot on, but he does look a little similar. But what really stands out to me are the differences in the eye color. The real man on the left has blue eyes, but the imposter at the top has darker eyes. I don't think I even have to continue on with this video to show that this card game is shady. This card game does not pass the smell test. Even the description of this card feels like it's satire to this theory. This card permits you to play from your hand a personality which duplicates one that has been taken out. 
we're going to go ahead and move away from this card and start looking into some others. Make no mistake about it, the 2020s has been the strangest times for humanity. It may not have been the worst, but it has been downright weird. That brings my attention to the word weird. We are hearing the word weird a lot lately from news, media, and politicians, so much so it seems like they really are controlling the word. She's weird, he's weird, you're weird, I'm not weird, they're weird, and so forth. This is what's flowing through our media as of recent. Well, it seems like Steve Jackson and Steve Jackson Games picked up on this whole weird phenomena a couple decades prior to this whole weird phenomena. With the card titled The Weird Turn Pro, the description of this card reads, when the going gets weird, the weird turn pro. This card may be played at any time and counts as the action for the group it affects. The increased power takes effect immediately. The power for one weird group is increased to four. So essentially what the description is telling us is that weird will benefit a certain group. And we have been seeing throughout news and media that the word weird has been benefiting Democrats. For example, take a look at this article back on August 6th titled, How the United States Election Turned Weird and Why It's Working for the Democrats. The Democrats have discovered a secret sauce in their campaign against Donald Trump and the MAGA mob. Suddenly, media headlines are splashed with references to weird. For example, how Trump and Vance went from a threat to democracy to weird. Suddenly, the election is about weird versus normal. J.D. Vance says, feelings not hurt by weird insult from Democrats. So again, Democrats are using the word weird and references to weird to their benefit against Donald Trump, something that is shown to us in this card here. And again, just like with the card imposter, this card plays somewhat like satire. If we did not know any better, if we did not know that this card was created decades before, one could easily see just that, that this card is satire to all this weird stuff that's taking place today. Now, moving on to another card, I do not believe this card has been played as of yet, but it's still interesting nonetheless. This card here titled Texas. The artwork on this card shows a steer with antennas on its horns and in the background, you can see a tower. The description of this card reads, you wouldn't believe what's hidden in the miles and miles of Texas Plains. They're counting on that. What is rather odd about this card outside of its description is that this is the only card I have found to have two different types of artwork. The other card labeled Texas has different artwork, but it has the same description. In the artwork, you can see a man dressed in black on the phone and inside the van, you can see a lot of money, but in the background, you can still see another tower, a radio tower. The description is still rather creepy. You wouldn't believe what's hidden in the miles and miles of Texas Plains. They're counting on that. And counting is bold in both cards. So what is Steve Jackson trying to tell us about Texas that he needed to create two separate cards for? Now, while we do not know what is hidden in the plains of Texas that they want to keep hidden, there has been some rather bizarre news coming out of Texas this past couple weeks. For example, 103 earthquakes in one week with news and media asking what is going on in West Texas. Reading from this article from USA Today, they say, so many earthquakes have struck the West Texas County of Scurry in the past week, more than 100 at last count, local officials have declared a state of emergency. They state that the county's buildings can handle a few quakes here and there, but the cumulative effects of so many small ones punctuated by larger shaking have become cause for concern. They continue to state that the rash of earthquakes is not naturally occurring as Texas in general is not a very seismically active part of the country. Instead, it is almost 99% likely to be linked to local oil fields. We can say with confidence that these are related to oil and gas extractions. The tremblers are very likely linked to new forms of oil and natural gas drilling technology that allows companies to drill not just down into the earth, but horizontally along an oil formation. We do not know if this is 100% true or not because they do not know 100% themselves. 99% still is not 100% sure. There is still that 1% room for doubt. So this is a rather creepy card in already a very creepy game where all these events are coming true. This next card without a doubt also creeps me out because I have made a lot of videos when it comes to what took place on July 13th at Trump's rally. 
this card titled Mistaken Identity. The description of this card reads, play this card after any type of takeout. It becomes an automatic failure. Through the kind of coincidence that seems to happen around the Illuminati, an innocent bystander meets a weird and messy end, while the target goes happily about his business. This card is rather self-explanatory and it kind of links with the card Enough is Enough we saw on July 13th where Trump had been missed and in his place was an innocent bystander, Corey Comperture. Not only is it the fact that an innocent bystander was taken out at Trump's rally and Trump survived, but there has been a lot of mistaken identity taking place on July 13th as well. Only a couple hours after it happened, we had a individual come out and say, he hates Trump, he hates Republicans, I am Thomas Matthew Crooks, but you have the wrong guy. News and media latched onto this and they said, this is Thomas Matthew Crooks, this is the man at the rally. They were even comparing the photo of Thomas Matthew Crooks to this man. Come to find out, this man that said he was Thomas Matthew Crooks was a Twitter troll by the name of Jew Gazing. But make no mistake about it, Jew Gazing does look eerily similar to Thomas Matthew Crooks. Then we have the man lying prone on the roof, the man who caused the incident at Trump's rally that they are saying is Thomas Matthew Crooks. But to almost everybody else, this man looks like Jaxwell Muthrick. People were coming out and saying that is indeed Jaxwell Muthrick. News and media came out and said, no, that's not Jaxwell Muthrick. You have the wrong guy. Again, we have a case of mistaken identity, supposedly anyway. Then the woman in white behind Trump as he's given his speech, many people have said that this is the FBI assistant director, Janine DiGiuseppe. Now, I made a video touching on this topic, this woman in white, and how I said this woman in white does look eerily similar to Janine DiGiuseppe. We're just not 100% sure that's her. Candace Owens made a video saying, she is 100% sure that woman is not Janine DiGiuseppe and it's another woman. But the evidence that Candace Owens was giving did not make any sense whatsoever. It was very faulty. But that's still another example of mistaken identity at this one rally. And then we have this individual being arrested, which many people believed was Jaxwell Muthrick's accomplice, Kenan Hooper. Come to find out that was not Kenan Hooper, but an individual who just happened to look like Kenan Hooper to the point that many people were saying this is proof that Jaxwell Muthrick was at the rally. Now, I know his name is not Jaxwell Muthrick, but like I have pointed out, if you use his real name, YouTube's algorithm does not like it whatsoever. Even the vehicles had a mistaken identity. First, we heard that the suspect was driving a white van. His white van was taken by police and it had explosives inside. Then they are saying, no, he did not drive a white van or was not associated with a white van, but he drove his gray Hyundai to the scene and his gray Hyundai had explosives. Again, so many mistaken identities around this one day that this card really stands out, especially once again, when you put it side by side with the card that's titled Enough is Enough. Another rather interesting card happens to be the Flat Earthers card. People believing the Earth is flat is nothing new. This kind of ideology goes all the way back to ancient times. I kind of thought that the term or the word Flat Earthers was rather new, a word to describe people who believe the Earth is flat, but come to find out, this word goes all the way back to 1926. The artwork and the title of the card do not stand out, but it's the description of the card that stands out. The description reads, people laugh, but the flat earthers know something. So what indeed do the flat earthers know, Steve Jackson? Now we do not know if Steve Jackson is a person that believes the earth is flat or not, but we do know once again, Steve Jackson games was raided by the secret service because Steve Jackson was hacking some very important places. So what kind of information did he receive? What is rather interesting is when you place another card side by side with this card, that card titled NASA, where again, it's rather self-explanatory what they're trying to tell us. The artwork shows that the moon, the space shuttle, and the backdrop of the earth are all just a prop and that the moon landing was filmed on earth. People who do believe that the earth is flat, they are mocked, they are laughed at today, 
But Steve Jackson is telling us that they may know something after all. Whether or not you believe that the Earth is flat is still a rather interesting card to look at, especially when you put everything together as a whole. With that being said, which of the five cards was very eerie to you? Please do comment in the comment section below. In any case, thank you so much for watching. If you like this channel and you want to see more, please subscribe. If you're already subscribed, please like, as any engagement does help the channel grow. Once again, thank you so much for your support.